Statins, atorvastatin, simvastatin, pravastatin, basically any drug ending in statin. If you're from the US, you might also know it as Lipitor. Now, these are drugs which help you lower your cholesterol levels. Why do you need it? Well, you've probably been offered a statin if your cholesterol levels are high. The problem with high cholesterol is that it can cause fat to deposit in your blood vessels and sometimes block them. This is called cardiovascular disease. If it happens in your heart, it can lead to a heart attack. If it happens in your brain, it can lead to a stroke. And if it happens somewhere else, it's called peripheral vascular disease. For a lot of people, this is a lifestyle issue. Your diet, exercise, smoking, drinking, these can all affect your cholesterol levels. And as we get older, these levels tend to build up slowly but surely. Some people also have a genetic issue which causes them to have really, really high cholesterol levels at a much younger age. Your doctor often prescribes statins when your cholesterol hits a certain level. They basically take into account a few other things from your lifestyle as well. So things like, do you smoke? Do you have high blood pressure? Do you have any other medical conditions? Blah, 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 and so on and so on. And from that, they can work out your risk of cardiovascular disease. And if your risk is getting high, they'll probably start you on statins. As statins bring your cholesterol levels down, less fat gets laid down in your blood vessels, there's less chance of them blocking, and so your cardiovascular risk decreases as well. So some people take them to reduce your risk of something nasty happening. That's what we call primary prevention. Some people start taking them after something nasty has already happened, like a heart attack. That's called secondary prevention. Now, it's important to know that high cholesterol can often be tackled through lifestyle modifications. So if you can improve your diet and your exercise levels, you can work on bringing your cholesterol levels down. And when that doesn't do the job, then you move on to drugs. To understand how it works, you need to know a little bit about cholesterol. Now, this lipid gets a bit of a bad rap, but the reality is that cholesterol is essential for life. In fact, every single cell in your body has cholesterol in it. Most of your cholesterol is synthesized in the liver and it's taken to all your other tissues where it's used. If there's too much to be used, then it's taken back to your liver where it gets recycled or gets rid of. It's a lovely balance, but you can see that if that balance breaks down, then it might be possible to start laying down more fat. We often say there's good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. When we say that, we're not actually talking about cholesterol. We're talking about the proteins which move cholesterol back and forth. These are called lipoproteins and they come in different densities, high and low. Low density lipoprotein or LDL is the Uber driver that takes cholesterol from your liver and dumps it in your tissues. High density lipoprotein or HDL is the lift driver which takes your cholesterol from your tissues back to your liver. And if you've ever seen a cholesterol breakdown blood test, you'll know that's basically the breakdown that we're looking at. You basically wanna have nice high levels of HDL and low levels of LDL and something called non-HDL because there are other ones as well, but don't really worry about that. So think of HDL as good, the H is happy, and think of LDL as bad, but you still need both, so don't think about it too hard. So how do statins work? Well, you know earlier I said the liver creates cholesterol? Well, statins stop that, which means you produce less cholesterol. But you also still need that cholesterol, so the liver increases receptors to pull other cholesterol back, so you're pulling more LDL back to the liver as well. Both of these work together to reduce your cholesterol levels. Statins are proven to reduce your levels significantly, which is great, but once you start statins, you'll probably be on them for life because if you take them away, then cholesterol levels can shoot back up again. Side effects. Well, statins are a super common drug and on the whole, there aren't many side effects because most people are fine with them. The most common side effects though are things related to your gut. So diarrhea, constipation, farting, nausea, things like that. Mostly transient, won't last forever. But the side effect that gets talked about a lot is muscle weakness, particularly up here in the shoulders and here in the thighs. Statins can also interact with some other drugs and your doctor will probably know about that already. Some of those include antibiotics. So if you're starting a short course of antibiotics, say for like a week or so for a little infection, it may be reasonable to stop statins while you're taking it. You can talk with your doctor about this. But look, as always, if you don't feel right when you're taking a drug, just talk to your doctor. 
Now on to the geeky stuff. So goodbye, most of you, but please do subscribe before you go. But for those of you who are sticking around, here's the history and the pharmacology. So two sections which I'm putting in because most people, even some doctors, don't know where these drugs came from and what they actually do to you on the inside. So the history. Well, cholesterol has fascinated scientists since 1784 when it was first discovered from gallstones. A French dude called Michel Chevreau named it cholesterol from the Greek chole for bile and asterios solid. So solid bile. Pub quiz knowledge for you there. People study cholesterol heavily from this point on. In fact, 13 Nobel Prizes have been given out for it, but it was only in the 20th century when scientists began to see a link between cholesterol and arteriosclerosis, or the blocking of blood vessels. They'd seen high cholesterol in the corpses of people who have plaques in their blood vessels, they saw it in rabbits that they fed pure cholesterol to, and they saw it in people who had genetic conditions causing them to have early heart attacks. In the 1950s, the connection was finally made by a scientist called John Goffman, who began to see the balance of LDL and HDL as well. A couple of other big studies happened, the Seven Countries study and the Framingham Heart study. Both of these eventually proved beyond a doubt that high cholesterol leads to more heart attacks. Meanwhile, a bunch of other people were working on the cholesterol synthesis pathway, so how it is actually made. The Nobel Prize in 1964 was given to Conrad Bloch and Feodor Leinen for working this out, particularly one of the steps, the rate-limiting step of cholesterol production, which involves the reduction of a compound called HMG-CoA by an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase. More on this in the next section. At that Nobel dinner, the S. Feinberg, the rector of Caroline Institute, made the following remarks. Your discoveries may provide us with weapons against some of mankind's gravest maladies, above all in relation to cardiovascular diseases. Achievements like yours make it not unrealistic to look forward to a time when mankind will not only live under vastly improved conditions, but will itself be better. Nice stuff. Inspiration for your kids. Anyway, now people knew the pathway for how cholesterol was made, they knew what they could attack. So step in Japanese biochemist Akira Endo. Now he loved working with fungus, from which we derive a lot of antibiotics, and he thought he might be able to hit the HMG-CoA pathway, and indeed in 1972 discovered a compound called compactin, which was found inside some bluey green penicillin type fungus mold. Now compactin had a really similar structure to HMG-CoA, which means if you throw it at the same rate-limiting enzyme, HMG-CoA reductase, compactin competes with HMG-CoA to fit inside it, like having two sets of keys that fit the same lock. And if you have loads of this key, it makes it harder for this key to get in. That's what we call competitive inhibition. Now, this was a huge success, and seeing this, lots of other drug companies jumped on the train. From compactin and a similar compound called lovastatin, it began to derive lots of other statins and there you have it. So how does it work in a bit more detail? Well, we've actually covered most of it. Now this is the mevalonate pathway. Right at the top you can see you have acetyl-CoA, and here you have HMG-CoA. So once HMG-CoA is reduced, all of this happens until eventually you have cholesterol. So the statin, which is basically the same shape as HMG-CoA reductase, swarms over a bit, making it harder for HMG-CoA reductase to get in. I spoke earlier about having two sets of keys, but it's really like having one key to open the lock and having some chewing gum which you can smush into the lock on the other hand. That chewing gum is a statin. Now there are several different types of statins and they have different half-lives. The torvastatin is a common one, has a long half-life, that means you can take it whenever you like. Simvastatin, on the other hand, has a shorter half-life, so we recommend taking that one at night time, which is when the LDL receptors in your liver come out to play. And there you go, statins, awesome little drugs which help keep your cholesterol levels nice and low and help to reduce your cardiovascular risk. Lots more drug explainers in this series on this channel, so see you next time. Please do like and subscribe and toodaloo.